Despite an impressive combat record, paratroopers are a relatively new method of troop deployment. The U.S. Army's 29th Infantry Regiment formed a test platoon and conducted its first training jump in August 1940. Two years later, the 509th Parachute Infantry Regiment completed its first major implementation of airborne combat troops during Operation Torch in support of the amphibious invasion in North Africa. World War II was the battlefield that tested the capabilities of static line parachutes. They continue to be a presence on modern day battlefields, but they have seen several renditions and undergone modifications. The T4 static line parachute was said to be the first parachute designed for combat use. When paratroopers jumped, the static line parachute automatically deployed the canopy followed by the rigging lines. T4 parachutes had a variety of issues, the most apparent being that the parachute deployed before the rigging. This resulted in a paratrooper falling at 120 miles per hour before being yanked to a violent hover as they floated to the landing zone. These issues were addressed in the T5, which improved the risk of accidentally unhooking from the static line cord. The T5 had a vertical sliding gate and spring-loaded button that allowed for jumpers to slide along at their own controlled pace before exiting the aircraft. The pre-deployment of the parachute before the rig couldn't be resolved. More than 13,000 paratroopers jumped into Normandy on D-Day and lost equipment. The T5 parachute rigs also had a quick release mechanism, sometimes called the bang box, which allowed paratroopers to release themselves from their harness without delay once they were on the ground. The T5 was the most widely used parachute during World War II and was used during Operation Market Garden. The T5 was phased out before the Korean War and the Army emphasized the inclusion of the T7 parachute. But the T-7 had a serious issue in malfunctions caused by the increased speeds with which airplanes traveled. The wind speeds caused wear and tear on the chutes, resulting in 12 fatalities. In the 1950s, the T-10 rose to be the premier parachute used by American airborne troops until its retirement in 2014. The Army abandoned the T-10 because of the frequent associated injuries during airborne operations. The parachute in use today is the T-11 Advanced Tactical Parachute System, which was first introduced in 2007. Early reports indicated the T-11 had reduced injury rates by 75%, but as recently as 2016, fatalities using the T-11 presented unsolved challenges in the adjustment of training and procedures to ensure paratrooper safety. While parachuting technology is always evolving, the bravery and dedication of airborne troops remains constant.